Hey everybody, and welcome to what I'm going to call my one month review. I'm about three days shy of a month having the PlayStation VR 2, and uh, just wanted to give my thoughts and, you know, all that kind of stuff on everything related to it. So, it's oddly still plugged into my PlayStation that goes off screen here, but here is the headset. Everybody's seen it, talked about it. You got your tracking cameras on the front. Don't have to worry about any external camera like before. There is the vent there that says Sony on it. You have the uh, eye adjustment. You have the release of the hinge here so that it can go away from your face. Flip it over, power button. For me, this is the pass-through. It can be changed to the mute if you do a lot of multiplayer, but I don't play enough multiplayer. Microphone. A really, I know there's like controversy about this being kind of silly, but I think that so far, this is the most comfortable with that dual layer nose thing. So you don't have light coming in through the nose hole. And this is very light on your face, especially when you press that button to release it. I wear my glasses without any problems. There's no scratches. Uh, after a solid month of use, there's no issues here. Uh, I was thinking it was going to wear out just because this is one area that your face does sweat because of the material, but it's comfortable, haven't felt anything inside. I thought that maybe after some use you'd start to feel it, but nope, it's still good. Another controversial thing is these earpieces. I use them occasionally, but most of the time because my PlayStation is plugged into a capture card on my computer, I just use my game con gaming headphones. Um, I have thought heavily about possibly getting the PlayStation Pure Sound ones that have the simulated surround sound. Don't know if that'll happen, um, but as of right now, my headphones and these work. These work okay. I know they're not the best, but they work, you know. Um, I had the, what I would call, iteration 2 of the PlayStation 1, and they actually had the same thing. Um, I know a lot of people got that first generation or first iteration, um, and they had like this whole thing going on on the cable, and you plugged in your headphones there. But this is actually designed off of the second iteration of the PlayStation 1 VR. But anywho, um, yeah, they work when I want to do it myself and play like Pavlon and stuff where there's voice chat, um, just so I don't have to switch all my cables around. But... Um, other headphones obviously would be better. The release, the locking mechanism, and then I can't do it one-handed, but you actually get some nice gap to place it on your forehead. Yes, the sweet spot is very small with the eye tracking functionality and stuff, but I have had no problems. I feel like once you set it, you forget it. I haven't really played any games that are super active. Um, so... I mean, in that sense. Yes, I've played games that are active, but nothing enough that I can't tighten it and it doesn't move that sweet spot. So I know that there's a lot of people and there's a lot of headsets that are out there and there's people saying that there's a film across the lens and you can tell. I haven't been able to tell. Um, so mine must just be a lucky one that didn't have any flaws. Obviously, if you got it from PlayStation and you're within your 30-day period... Return it to them and get another one if you feel like it's a flaw because some people see it and some people don't. It happens with every headset with all the different technologies, but mine seems to be working well. All right, moving on. Um, I got, obviously, the controllers. Um, I have I've done my diligence to hit things on accident. I don't know if it was the left one. Let's see. I got to look in real life. Hold on. Oh man. No, I guess it was at the it must have been the right one. Hold on. Cuz there's like paint on mine now. Uh, uh yeah, there it is. So, I don't know if the camera's going to Oh, there it is. So that's paint from my wall. Oops. Uh and I thought there was another. Yeah, there's a little bit here too. So, they definitely can, you know, handle a wallop unfortunately um what was there there was like a defect on mine which is very obvious i think it's on the left side something doesn't line up mm. oh i am 
looking, I am looking. Oh, here it is. Yeah, there you go. It's like a piece of plastic. It's supposed to line up, and it's... I don't think it's from being hit on anything. I think it's just like a piece that didn't get popped into place. Oh, look at that. A piece that popped out. I thought it was like a defect, but never mind. Okay, moving on. Um, controllers. I absolutely love them. Um, the dynamic triggers in like Resident Evil Village, Pavlon, um, pretty much all the shooter games. I even just got the Walking Dead uh bundle where you get uh saints and sinners chapter one and you get the new chapter two obviously i haven't played chapter two yet because i haven't finished chapter one i can't say it's like a game that i would play a lot of but being that the library on the psvr2 is so small at the time right now which every console playstation 5 and xbox the new xbox had the same problem it just takes time for developers to hop on board of the new console. Same thing with VR. It just will be even slower. Um, but anyways, I love that. I love that this is touch. You don't, like It's got a small click, but you don't... like Some of the things, just having your finger there is like you're gripping that object. And if you let go, you let go of the object. object. Sometimes it is like a toggle, so you have to click it. But still, great. Um, I did, as you can see... I went with the $50 charger. I know that there's ones out there. Sorry, my room is a little dusty. Um, I know that there are third parties out there. And everybody's like, oh, you have to be able to dock it properly. And it's like, that was it. I felt it click. It's in place. And it sits up on the counter or up on my dresser next to my TV. So once it's in there, the little lights come on, which you're not going to see because it's unplugged. They're right here. And they pulsate when they're charging and they turn off right away when they're charged. But, I mean, they're in there. I'm wiggling it around on my bed and it's still in there. So, I didn't want to have a third party possibly short out my controllers. And then they're like, well, you're not using officially licensed products. So, I went with the officially licensed thing, which they all have this USB-C, like, electric contact. There you go. See? little USB-C and the contacts. It just goes in the port. I just, you know, I don't have the original USB-C cable that charged my DualShock controller, and then you get one, and I'm like, okay, so then I have to use a thir another part cable I have, which isn't hard, but this is just easy to set them down when I'm done and pick them up when I'm ready. Um, the strap is like, they all say, you just twist your arm, and it tightens it. Super convenient. Yes, the battery life isn't that long, but at this moment in time with the games that are out there, four, five hours, depending, is a really good battery life. Um, I have definitely noticed that when you have a lot of like dynamic triggers and you have a lot of vibrations going on, the battery gets like two or three hours. But if you go and turn that down to medium on the strength and medium on the shaking and stuff like that you get like an extra hour out of it um some games barely use it like they use it moderately and some use it constantly where you when you're holding an object you definitely feel that that vibration which means that the motors are running so you know it's like anything else you know a switch lasts like two to three like three to four hours and if you you know turn the brightness down and turn the bluetooth off you get better battery life but I mean, I'm not like, oh, man, I want to keep playing. Like, it's almost perfect. It's like time to take a break after four or five hours in. So that's the way I think about that. Um, games. I I went through this huge array of downloading games. Um, I told you that I originally had downloaded The Village again, and I got the upgrade to PSVR 2. I downloaded the update to Gran Turismo 7, which is awesome. I think it's a lot better when you have a steering wheel, but they cost a lot of money, especially when you want to get the pedals and you want to get a professional one with, you know, force feedback and stuff. But that may come someday, but I'm not a huge simulation racer. And even just using like a controller and playing is still kind of fun. So, but the game quality graphics I can see why people absolutely love Gran Turismo. Um, the Village, 
excellent. Um, at this point in time, the remake of Resident Evil 4 has launched on PlayStation. I think other places. But they still have that release trailer that shows that PlayStation VR is in development. Um, so I don't plan on buying it on PlayStation until the VR portion has been released because, you know, I have Resident Evil 4 on my quest as the Capcom and, you know, Meta working together to make that. So I could play it there if I really wanted to, but I really want to just give them a chance to develop the PSVR 2 version and play it that way because the village was awesome. I, I think I'm going to play through the village again on like one more step up difficulty it was i don't know how much replayability it has for me but it'd be nice um trying to think i did buy some of the games that i already have elsewhere uh pistol whip again those dynamic triggers are awesome for when you're shooting um i bought the jurassic park after math uh everything that i had on the quest i got on playstation vr 2 and they are crystal clear. They upgraded textures, dynamic triggers, you know, vibrations. Uh, oh, I forgot. I'm sorry. <laughs> My hands went to go get a drink. Um, the motor up here for the vibrations in like Horizon Call of the Mountain and Pistol Whip and Resident Evil Village. If you get hit or attacked... You feel the vibration when you like hit the ground or if someone's hitting you in the game. So, I mean, a lot of people are like, oh, you know, you don't know if developers are going to use it, but they're using it. The HDR is active, the eye tracking. It's not using eye tracking like they have in Call of the Mountain where you can look at the menu system and where you're looking is where you can click. Um, but for the foveated rendering which keeps it crystal clear where you're looking and downgrades the graphics around you for purposes to keep it functioning smooth for you. That is all active with eye tracking. Um, I think the games that come out in the future that are made on the get-go for PSVR, um, they will have eye tracking for menus and things like that. But the foveated rendering is definitely a thing, and a lot of people notice it when you're streaming it because that's all they see is when you're looking at something, it's the focus. Uh, you just, I haven't been able to notice it on the fly in the game because it's so quick to see where you're looking that it just, it switches so quickly. Um, let's see. Uh, games. The Like I said, the amount of games that we have, they are, it's limited. Um, the console just came out. I call it a console because it is a whole ecosystem of games that have either come out and are upgraded or are going to come out. Um, and the games that are going to be coming out across like multiple platforms like Quest, PC, and PlayStation VR. Um, hopefully we see all the new games come out with all the technologies that the PSVR has to offer. And that there are studios that will actually release first party games from them that will have all those features. Anything that's been ported is questionable, but I think it's not that difficult to put those features in um, to get that sale on the uh, game itself. But yeah, um, I've already gone longer than I wanted to, but overall, the headset's nice in weight, comfort. I could play it a lot longer than the battery life could go. Um, I want to see things like, I want to see Rec Room come back to PlayStation VR. I want it to go into version 2. I want to see uh, some form of VR chat so that we can do it that way because there are a lot of cool games in that. And I heard Beat Saber is coming back um, so to the PlayStation VR 2, so that would be really awesome. And uh, just want to see all those future games coming down the pipe. Remember, it is a $550 investment, and I think it's going to be around for five years. And they always have to put a little bit of extra in because... This headset doesn't get replaced every year or every two years. This is going to be like a five-year headset. Um, so I'm glad that PlayStation took the next step to give us real controllers designed for VR and gave us an upgraded headset with newer technologies 
that yes, the next VR headsets by Meta and Valve, they'll all have that in it, but we have it a little bit earlier and the features are live. So all in all, I am uh, very satisfied with what I've got here. Um, I honestly thought I was going to use the PlayStation box that they gave you the headset in as my storage thing, but right now it just sits to my left of my computer and PlayStation. One other thing, um, I finally went out and bought a two terabyte SSD for my PlayStation 5 because there was so much deleting and installing of games and I wanted to buy more PlayStation VR games. So now I'm set for at least six months to a year on games. I downloaded everything I have, and I still have a terabyte available, so we're good. Anywho, um, you know, I may put out a future video when more games come out. Um, we're still looking for Firewall Ultra, which was the replacement of Firewall. Um, uh, oh my gosh. The Firewall game from PlayStation VR, possibly seeing Iron Man come out on PlayStation VR 2. I think that'd be really nice. Um I just want to see a lot of the new games come out so we can experience the technology beyond the showcase of Call of the Mountain uh, under the Horizon name. So enjoy. Uh, I give it two thumbs up for purchasing it. If you're someone that has a PS5 and you want to get into a really nice headset, just know that the games are slowly trickling out and hopefully by the end of the year, we should see another 50 games come out, which is pretty awesome for VR. I know it's a slow time for all the platforms and new game development. So thank you again. Share, subscribe, and comment below. And we'll see you in the next video. Thanks, guys. Bye.